introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Warren for Queensbury Promotions, sponsored by Coral and Raynham Steel, proudly presents the main event of the evening, 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBA International Super Middleweight Championship, live on Box Nation from the SSE Arena here at Wembley in London. Your officials are appointed by the WBA and your three scoring judges at ringside are Mr. Dave Paris of the UK, Mr. Jesus Morata Garcia of Spain and Mr. Stefano Carozza of Italy. Your WBA supervisor is Mr. Robert Smith of Wales. Your steward in charge is Mick Collier and your timekeeper at the bell is Peter McCann. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Terry O'Connor of the UK. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, fighting out of the red corner, stands a man whose record reads 23 wins, nine losses with 14 KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled 12 stone, five pounds, four ounces, and tonight he wears the black shorts Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Aguas Calientes, Mexico, Fernando Castaneda! And across the ring in the blue corner stands the former undefeated WBO European Super Middleweight Champion. A man with a record of 16 wins, one loss, one draw with 12 KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled 11 stone, 13 pounds, 6 ounces, and tonight he wears the white and gold shorts. Please welcome, from Enfield, England, the wise guy, Frank Bullione. Your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Here we go, lads. Here we go. The spot you in change room, you know what to expect. Shake hands, best of luck to both. God bless you. 12 threes for the vacant WBA International Super Middleweight Championship. Bullioni stands six foot one, three or four inches taller than Castaneda. He's been working so hard over in Dublin with the Collins brothers, and he does look in great nick. Yeah, he really does. He looks in tremendous shape, and he would be. They'll be working him very hard over there. But he's always been a fit. He's always been fit. He's always been in shape. Coming into this on the back of that draw against Lee Markham last time out. Could be a rematch with him somewhere down the line. I'm sure they'll have one eye as well on George Groves, who's due to be facing Badu Jack in Las Vegas next month. Castaneda El Hurricane. It's going to be hard, isn't it, for Castaneda to get in? He's been so so much shorter than, than Bullioni, who's such a tall guy for a for a super middle. Both Sergei Kamitsky, who beat Frank Bullioni, and Lee Markham, it was the right hand over the top with which they prospered. That's always been the problem for Frank, hasn't it? That you know, he sometimes throws that jab out and brings it back to the chest and then leaves the chin exposed. But what he does have is a really good chin. He doesn't really get credit for that. Even against Kaminsky, even though hurt, he got up. Maybe he didn't know what to do when he got hit. That was the problem back then. Castaneda's but been stopped on four occasions. I say my uh, eyebrows raised a little bit when I heard the odds on those two stoppages, Mitchell Smith and Frank Bullioni at 5-2. to two. Well, Mitchell Smith certainly did his share of the equation. Yeah. And you would expect Frank, once he gets that right hand on target, to hurt Castaneda. You know, there are a few crafty shackles on that one when you heard it. <laughs> I, I didn't actually know. Yeah. 
could have had him hitching home. <laughs> Castaneda has been a pro for eight years now. He's lost three of his last five. Woo! On the back there, that was from Castaneda. Wild shot. Not over the top like it should have been. The one he's looking for, as but everybody will be doing against Bullioni. But you can see it from Castaneda. He's, you know, he's, he's sat back on the, on the back foot, you know, waiting for Bullioni to to leave himself exposed and then just jump in with the right hand. You, you can almost see it, or a long left hook. What Frank needs to do is just double up that jab, solid jab, push him back with, with the double jab and then and make space for that long right hand. Quiet opening round. Well, well Bully only had a good look, had a good look at Castaneda. As you can see, you know, Castaneda doesn't want to engage. He's going to have to force the issue. Second round of this 12-rounder. Quiet opener with Bullioni really just having a look at him and being told to continue working behind the jab but start to look for a chance to unleash the right hand. Well, the jab's still got to come back as fast as it goes out, but just a little bit more weight behind. Just, just, just make a little step with the front foot. Just transfer the weight forwards when you throw the jab. Just a little more weight on it just to push this kid back. And also that should be the perfect distance then for the uh, long right hand, which we know is a heavy shot for Bullioni. Not seen any of his power shots as yet. Still a little bit of a chess match in there as he just tries to work his way into an advantageous position. That's good, a bit of variety in the jab. We'll do that again and follow through with the right hand as well. Frank's dad at ringside alongside Francis Warren. Solid right hand from Bullioni, who had to take a couple from the Mexican. Yeah, Castaneda and Lowe did, but they were, they were a little bit slapping those shots, and, and Bullioni kept nice and tight. Jab got to be more of a weapon though for Bullioni. Just using it at the moment, just to, just to, to tap to find the range. I think it's got to be a potent weapon for him. Nice footwork from Castaneda, working away from the ropes. That overhand right, the right punch for Castaneda to throw. But he's just telegraphing it, it's a little bit too slow. 
and Bullioni, even though not doing too much, just doing enough to, to ease his way into the rounds, having a good look at Castaneda. Castaneda's corner man, a little bit slow to get out of the ring. Action underway for the third round. Not been too many fighters have gone from light welterweight all the way up to cruiserweight as he has, quite as quickly as he has. Must have had some serious, <laughs> some serious food. Here, of course, fighting at super middleweight, so he's uh, taking a few of those pounds away. That's a little faint there from Bullioni. He's, he's thinking about things, he's, tr he's trying little things out. No, nothing's coming to fruition there. You can see him sort of like trying to work things out. Good right hand there from Bullioni. I just feel, I just feel because he's an upright fighter, which is his style, which is fine. You need the solid jab. You, you can have a touching jab and a pouring jab when you're a slipping and slider or a roll on sort of fighter that can work for you. But when you're an upright fighter, you need a solid, really solid, strong jab. Well, I'm sure he'll have been only too well aware, well aware when looking and reviewing his performances in the fights where it's not been quite right. And indeed, in one or two of those where he's emerged victorious, that the criticism which he's had to take, while he won't have liked it, has probably been justified. And it, they'll be working on those faults and trying to put it right, and he'll need to be right against Judinov, and he needs to be right tonight as well to get past this fella. Well, this is another fight, this is similar to Billy Joe's fight, isn't it? That in, in a way that this is a fight that we shouldn't really lose against, but it's you got a massive fight coming up again, because that Judinov fight can still be made, apparently, and, and I think it's just a pause rather than, than postpone totally, then... And he needs to you know, be, be, be look impressive, but still look, be very cautious, not to pick up any injuries or get caught with silly punches. But he's, he's learned, he, does, he, he has learned from some of his mistakes, to, be, to, be, to give him a bit of credit. He trains hard, he works hard, he listens to whoever, whoever was training when he was with, with Mark and Jimmy Tibbs, and now he's with, with Stephen Pascal Collins. He listens to the guys and he does what he's told, and, and that's all you can ask from your fighter. Good shot. That's better from Bullioni. Just starting to find his range a little bit here in the third round. Continuing to peck away with that almost range finding jab, but then a very much more power from the right flank as he thuds in that body shot. A couple of meaty looking left hooks from Castaneda maybe a hint of inside of the glove about yeah, them that's the, the, that's the sound it's inside the glove the slapping sound it's another decent round there for Bullioni he's winning without being massively impressive he's winning everything quite clear impression they want him to start dishing it out a bit more a 
Castaneda just covering up. Shot. And a good distance as well with the punches. He doesn't need to get too close. He can still fight inside, if you like, but from a, from that distance because he's so much taller and, and has a longer reach than Castaneda. So he can throw it because from range, Bullion, and get away with it. And I think then he can engage and still be in a safe position. Castaneda has landed with a couple of body shots as he did in the last round. his gloves tucked up very high. And Bullioni has so often having to punch down slightly. He's tall for a super middleweight. Yeah, he's used to that problem, isn't he? That's better jab. Rocked back the head of the Mexican. And stayed nice and calm under pressure. I don't think there's any power in Castaneda's punches, but it was still a flash flurry, and, and Bullioni stayed nice and calm and just was thinking about once that subsided, the, the assault subsided to, to get my counter into play. Hurricane needs to find a little bit more. <laughs> oh, that's a good body shot. And the right hand as well, just before it over the top was a good shot. Starting to relax and set about his work with a little bit more authority, Bullioni. That's good, good right hand. He set it up well, though. Fake, fake with the jab, fainted with the jab, long left hook, then right hand. And you can see he's been working on drills and cooking up his feet. He'd sort of done a little drill in the middle of the ring just before that. That's good, doubling up the hook. Body shots will soften up the Mexican, maybe. Once more, a slappy look about those hooks to the rib cage. They are slappy, but it's, nice, but it's a nice little combination, isn't it? Like flashy and fast. Another bully only round. Oh, he's winning everything clear, isn't he? You know, he's having everything his own way. He looks quite comfortable in there also. I think he's going to start up in the pace a little bit now. How's that uh, fast hand speed of Castaneda, but not a lot on those punches? No, we're just showing Bully only staying nice and calm and did a, a little bit, a slight little bit of pressure, and then, and then getting his own shots off straight after. That was a good combination. That was that was good work from Bullioni. Everything was good there. Bullioni looking in complete control as we move into the fifth of this 12-rounder vacant WBA intercontinental belt at stake. Bullioni needing to come through this for his challenge for Sergei Kamitsky's world title. Did I say Kamitsky? Chudinov, I beg your pardon. Fedor Chudinov. Though he would like the Kaminsky return, I'm sure. No, I'm sure he would. Only. Maybe he'll get it somewhere. Fedor Chudinov, I stand corrected. Sorry about that. The thing with Frank, you know, you, when you watch Frank and you see him you know, early on in his career, not you know, knocking people over and being nice and strong, but being easy to hit. Let's be honest. And you sort of want to, and you, and I'm sure the trainer's working on stuff and make and make him a better all-round boxer. 
but he's always going to be a come forward fighter. That's his strength, isn't it? So I think maybe that's just what you concentrate on. So you try and keep your hands up high. But he doesn't need to be dancing around. I think he is always going to be a come forward fighter. That's where he looks his best. That's where he has his more success. Castaneda having a bit of success of his own in this round with his body shots. That's a jab. More than just a good jab, it was good reflexes from Bullioni. Hand eye coordination, you know, he, he threw it always without thinking. It's a good natural, good natural reaction. Be a massive uh, upset, of course, if Castaneda were to do a Kamitsky and if he was to beat Bullioni. Almost yeah. unthinkable for the yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? Lofty plans <laughs> for him to fight for the world title now. No sign that it's going to happen at all. Kamiski was always a dangerous fight. It was a risk. It was a right risk, I felt, at the time. But it was always a risk. This is just a fight, you know, because Chudinov had to pull out. This was a fight just to keep Frank busy before, well, the, having, before the challenge. Having had a, a long training camp, I'm sure that there is nothing more frustrating for a fighter than just to pull out and then to get back and peak again yeah and of course yeah you know it can, it can affect you not just physically but more, more oh, good shot, right hand it's been coming and he's going not up in time fights all over good shot when it came do you know what? I, he'll get criticised, like he always does. I don't know why people seem to be on his back a lot. That was a that was a decent performance. He was against a guy he was never going to lose against, but he was calm, professional. You know, he picked his shots quite well, and, and I think you know he didn't take any silly risks. You know, with a big fight coming, I, Did, I, didn't you, do anything wrong, did he? No, and from a, you know, from a trainer's point of view, if I was in his corner, I'd be more than happy with that. He did everything he had to do. Got the guy out there, you know, within 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 the first half of the fight, and and that's all you can ask. Chudinov, needless to say, at a different level, but the end when it came was impressive. Yeah, it was, you know, and he always got a... I don't think he's the big puncher that we thought he was going to be early on in his career, but he can hit, and he's accurate as well when he... and he got nice long shots. I think Kastanay already didn't want to know. He already felt a few good shots. That left hook there, I think that was the one that, that caused him a little bit of trouble. That's sort of round the back of the yeah. club, but I'm not sure it caught him flush. No, I think the left hook, I think, already just scrambled his senses just a little bit. And then that right hand then was enough to, for him to want to look for the floor, to be honest. Let's be, let's be truthful. But Frank, no, Frank was slowly working him over, I think. A bit like the Louis Petit fight, he was slowly working him over. He was definitely going to get the stoppage at some point. And, and all in all, it was a good night's work from Bullioni. Yep, mature performance, got a few rounds under his belt. And also, remember, as we said, Look, mentally, yeah, the world title fight coming now. Oh, when that's just already gets taken away, how oh, to get over that hurdle and, and just get in the ring and, and fight is hard Sa enough. Same scenario as Billy Joe Saunders. The last thing he wanted was to wind up getting cut or a head clash or whatever, let alone perish the thought of actually losing the thing. But he didn't need that's to get pick up any sort of injury and anyway. That's right. And he didn't get a one round blowout. He got he got four rounds and a bit, which is which is decent enough work to get rid of that all that anxiety, all that adrenaline from the training. And he moves on, hopefully now, and gets a true enough fight sooner rather than later. The wise guy fought like one. Here's Mark Burdis. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes, 56 seconds of the fifth round, Fernando Castaneda has failed to beat the referee's count. The winner and now the new WBA international super middleweight champion, the wise guy from Enfield in the blue corner, Frank Bullione. Good win, good performance, not against a world beater, of course, but he did what was necessary. Thank you, John. He did indeed, and he's got a new belt around his waist and not the world title belt uh, that he wanted, but hopefully that is down the line. Andy, you gave him a big thumbs up at the end of that and thumbs up for that performance from you. Yeah, very poised, um, in control at all times and good defence at times and, and a cracking punch to finish the fight right around the, on the side of the year. And uh, those punches are very disorientating and hard to come back from. You, you were making the point that in a fight like that, it's up to him to make a an opponent like he had, like, like the Mexican, to fight at a pace, at a pace that he can't handle, and then break his heart that way. Castaneda has been very negative, and 
if, if Frank Buchanan didn't let him, he'd be in there all night. Um, so you got to fight at a pace which makes it uncomfortable, and he'll check out. Or oh, you hit him with a punch you don't see. And that's what he did. Frank Buglioni drew the jab, met him close up with tight guard, and then caught him with the right hand around the side. Very and good finish. And Steve, Steve Lillis, it, it, the, the Mexican corner looked a bit upset about the count. I must say, I didn't see too much wrong yeah, with it myself. There, there was nothing wrong with it. When he went down, I think he decided he wasn't getting up the Mexican opponent. But he, Frank could be pleased with his night work, night's work, considering what's gone on the last um, few weeks with a choosing off fight. You can see there, he's just looking at his corner, though. They might have been urgent to get up. He was just looking at the canvas, and he had, there you go, he had no no intention of getting up there. No, I, I think I, he might have been a little bit concussed, you know, he, that, and still wanted yes. to fight on. I think I think that's probably right. He was concussed. No complaints about uh, Terry O'Connor's uh, count there. Um, let's pop down to the end and have a word with Frank Bullioni, shall we? Thanks very much, Jim. Yeah, Frank, you came in and did the business. How are you, you feeling ahead of tonight's assignment? I felt great going into the fight. The training camp's been fantastic. That was chewed off in front of me. And I wanted to hurt him. And uh, just a spiteful performance. And the man in front of me next, he's going to get it. There was a lot of control. I thought discipline, you were thinking about your defence. It looked like all the things you've been doing in camp you brought to bear there. Is that a, a glimpse of what we can expect from you? Yeah, that was strictly business. Um, and that's how it's going to be from now on. I'm not in there to, uh, to please the fans or please anyone else. I'm in there to do a job to do some damage and uh, want to rip that world title off the Russian. You have said that you you could be world-class in, in sparring, but you've yet to elevate your game perhaps to that level in the ring. It, what What's going to be the difference in making that happen? Well, that was a fraction of what I've been achieving in the gym. Um, the more he come at me, I started countering and timing his shots. And that's what I want to do to shoot him off, and he's, uh, he's, he's in a world of trouble. I sound quite angry, actually. <laughs> Can I just bring Francis in before we were well, with, with Pascal? Um, obviously, tuning up was postponed at two weeks uh, at notice. W what's the latest on that? How soon can we get him back over here? Frank will be challenging for the world title on 26th of September here at Wembley Arena. So the week after Lee Saunders? week after Lee Saunders. So, uh, you know, Frank will be lifting that WBA world title uh, on the, uh, you know, this time on the 26th of December. Uh, September. 26th of September. Uh, I thought tonight it was fantastic tonight very patient very mature performance you can tell that you know he's fired up he's raring to go um, and you know I think you can take the positives from tonight definitely um, like you said that was Chudinov in front of him and um, I, feel, I feel for Dimitri come 26th September because uh, Frank wants this badly he made, he made a big mistake by uh, postponing the fight because she's given me another seven weeks to get sharp got a little bit of ring rust out practiced a few things and uh, I'm more ready now next time we look forward to it well done boys thank you well, Frank, Frank Bullioni